Maxim Alexandrovich, thank you very much for giving us this interview. I would like to begin with one of what I consider to be the most important issues right now. What do you see as the path to victory over the pandemic in Russia? Well, the path is multifaceted. We often find ourselves returning to many areas of the Soviet experience. A lot of that was centered around universal vaccination. But the fact of the matter is that in Soviet times, the authorities did not deceive the people. Therefore, the people believed in the authorities, and nobody was at school questioning whether vaccinations were good or not. Everyone understood. The authorities cared for the people, and therefore, you had to get vaccinated. That is why there were no pandemics in the Soviet Union. And you can even watch documentary films about how when the Black Plague came to Soviet lands, the Soviet authorities very quickly, effectively, even very fiercely reacted. Entire neighborhoods and entire universities were isolated and vaccinations were done very quickly, which, by the way, saved the entire world in a second. Now, of course, we have a big problem because capitalism has brought about systemic deception of the people. People do not believe in the authorities. Therefore, today, there is huge resistance by ordinary people against vaccinations. But, you know, I myself got vaccinated. We are calling for voluntary vaccinations. Actually, you just need to show ordinary people that, that the vaccine is safe, that salvation lies with it. Of course, few people believe it is possible to create a good vaccine in such a small period of time. Although I think Russia is very lucky because from houses and ships to large enterprises and other things, it was all built during the Soviet Union and we still use them to this day. The same goes for the practice we have making vaccines and our fundamental science. So I personally decided to get vaccinated, but I think vaccinations need to be voluntary. It is not possible to make them mandatory and nothing good would come out of that. We need to show ordinary people that our vaccine, Sputnik V, and our other vaccines actually work and do not cause harm. In the past, of course, pandemics around the world have been brought to their knees only through vaccination. This pandemic is not the first, not in this century, not in the last century. There have been many, like the Spanish flu. We can even look at photographs from the beginning of the 20th century in which people are walking around in masks. Therefore, most likely it, the vaccine, is the only option to defeat the pandemic. The second thing we need to do is work on medications. We are lagging behind here. For example, there are a lot of very good Chinese medications that you cannot get in Russia. They cannot get registration certificates and are basically considered dietary supplements. I will say honestly that we, as a party, want to look after our close comrades and allies. I have already spent over 1 million rubles of my own money to buy medicine over the past half a year and from party coffers, which were all spent on Chinese medicine. They are considered dietary supplements here, but in China it is just medicine and they are certified as anti-COVID medication there. Among everyone we helped, not one person that contracted a serious form of the disease died. As for those who we were not able to help, we have seen many tragic deaths even of 40 to 45 year olds. Therefore, I believe we need a double prong strategy. On the one hand, we have to show our people that our vaccine is not a trick. It is not some conspiratorial attempt at changing people's genes. And we need to convince people by showing them with our actions. On the other hand, we have to develop our anti-COVID medications. What we have learned is that losing time in this sphere means losing lives. Until that is done, we need to use the best foreign pharmaceuticals out there, and I think those are the Chinese ones. China uses all the best parts of our former Soviet system, and that is why it has become, in all spheres of economic production, the leading power. Also in China, COVID has basically been eradicated. 
I do not think it all has to do with the severe measures taken by the Chinese authorities, for example, disease prevention, mandatory mask regimes, isolating entire areas, etc. No, it is also connected to the fact that they have developed effective anti-COVID medication. Therefore, we also have to use them, and our health ministry needs to urgently certify these anti-COVID medications because they save people's lives. Many people close to me have died. They were young. They are around 45, 47, people in their 40s. My heart still hurts that we were not able to get this medication to them in time. This medication that is entirely legally certified in China. How would you say the Russian and Chinese vaccines differ from the Western ones? I am deeply convinced that, first of all, both the Russian and Chinese vaccines are of a much higher quality because the socialist form of production does not aim to make profit, but it most of all seeks to achieve a quality result. During Soviet times, the ruling Communist Party made it so that it was not worth it to produce a result of poor quality. In the capitalist world, you can pay money. There was even some research done explaining that people with capital holdings of over 2 billion rubles are not even within reach of the international legal system. There is a system there and it works. So if the owners of a pharmaceutical corporation want to make a vaccine of poor quality, they can solve any problem they run into with money. That is not possible when the Communist Party is in charge. In China, Trying to pull something like that would most likely mean the death penalty, even if the person owns tens or hundreds of billions. Therefore, I'm sure that the Russian and Chinese vaccines are of as high quality as they could have been, considering they were produced in such a small time frame. Besides that, Russia does have problems. After all, it is more free market now. While China has a modern socialist system, with market elements. But whenever there is a socialist system with a communist party at the helm, the people believe in it. They believe in it because every year the communist party takes care of the people and does not deceive them, as is done under capitalism. So, I think the vaccines made their way around China quickly without any problems because nobody was against it. That is because everybody knows that the Chinese communist party has never moved against the people because it is in fact the people. We have a lot of problems because we are living in capitalism, as are many other countries in the world. Therefore, even when a vaccine actually works, people do not believe in it. And, en masse, people either refuse to get vaccinated, or they just get a paper showing they, quote, were vaccinated. In capitalism, it is simple. Corruption under capitalism is allowed to spread without limits. If you were in power, how would you revive the system of socialized medicine that you had in the Soviet Union? Well, a lot of people, when talking about the socialist economic system, say it was not effective. But we remember how the Soviet Union, even in the most difficult years and before the Great Patriotic War, or World War II, built up state enterprises. It really was a miracle that after the Civil War, Russia with the Bolsheviks built 10,000 enterprises in the midst of a completely destroyed economy over the span of just 10 years. That's 3,650 days. Around two and a half enterprises each day. We are talking about working, functioning, industrial factories. After the Great Patriotic War, when the country was entirely destroyed, Fascist Germany basically raised all of our cities and lands. We lost 40 million of our young, able-bodied population, our men and women. It was a terrible tragedy, and literally three five-year plans later, in just 15 years, we restored our cities and rebuilt our factories. We have had capitalism for 30 years now. Its anniversary just passed, and we are still being told, we will fix things, we will build things. So, socialist economic systems are effective. Why are they effective? Because such a system is based on the fact that the incomes of large companies, for example, 
the most profitable companies, go to the state budget and capital is immediately employed in production. How can we characterize the capitalist system? The owners of big capital, big companies, insure themselves and like to consider themselves as big people. They hoard money, capital, and bank accounts, and trillions of dollars just sit there for years. In a socialist economy, everything goes to production. Capital goes into housing, medicine, new technologies, etc. <laughs>